Yes, everybody, welcome back to Talking Walls. Welcome back to a brand new match preview on the channel today. Hope you guys are keeping well and safe. And we're back for another match preview as Wolves are here to take on Aston Villa in the league. Great that uh, international football is done. We are back in league action. Hopefully, Wolves are back with a bang as we travel to Villa Park on Saturday. As always, I'm going to be giving my thoughts ahead of the game. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, guys. Let me know in the comments section down below. Going to be giving, as always, uh, my predicted lineup, and we'll get the Villa perspective later on in the video as well. Before we kick off, our channel partners over at Football Prizes have got a signed and framed Ruben Never shirt up for grabs uh, this week. So be sure to go and check out their prize draw. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below and that should end on Wednesday so get involved now if you want your chance to win that shirt but interna international break is done uh, Wolves of course as always uh, now it's the norm that we've got a number of players out on international duty but there have been some absences as well of course we'll hear more team news uh, from Bruno Large in his press conference tomorrow so be sure to check out obviously on Talking Walls for the latest news as well um, but as far as we're aware in terms of defensive uh, areas pretty much as we expect Gerson Mascara is still out injured uh, but Nelson Semedo was out on international duty with Portugal he wasn't initially picked in the squad but was picked as a replacement and travelled with them in the end Connor Cody of course was with the England squad as well. Um, in terms of midfield, Martinho and Neves were with Portugal. Neves missed a little spell of training with Portugal. He did have a little knock, but in their most recent game, I think he came off the bench and got an assist for one of their goals. And in the attacking areas for Wolves, uh, unfortunately, Francesco Trincao has tested positive for COVID-19. That was last week, but I don't think his self-isolation will be over until after Saturday's game against Villa, so should be available for next week. Um, Adama didn't travel with um, with Spain. Juanqui Chan was with South Korea, and Raul Jimenez did score a goal yesterday um, in the early hours of this morning, really scored a penalty against El Salvador, and I believe he is en route back to the UK if he hasn't already landed. So he will be back, available for the game against Villa. Whether he'll be at tip-top 100% it remains to be seen, um, but you'd expect, as our number one key striker, you'd expect he'd still be starting that game. But Wolves will be hoping to continue some strong momentum that we had just before the international international break. Two wins on the bounce, beating Southampton, and of course then beating Newcastle. Possibly the last time uh, we play a, a very, very weak, you could say, Newcastle side, depending on how much they invest in, in January. But um, two good wins uh, could have been could have gone either way. You could say the Southampton game especially. Uh, but Newcastle, I felt we had a pretty firm grip on that game and just had to cut out silly mistakes and be a bit more ruthless in front of goal. But now we've seen Jimenez grab two assists and a goal in that, those last two games. Huang grabbed two goals in that most recent game. You start to believe all of a sudden the strong form that we did have at the start of the season um, and all of our chances that we were having that weren't paying off, maybe slowly it's turning in our favour slightly. Um, Villa at the moment haven't really hit a, a proper level of consistency. They are one point ahead of us in the league, but dropped points against the likes of Brentford, as did we, and Watford. Um, but on the flip side of that, have beaten the likes of Manchester United as well. So, and like I said, an inconsistent start for Villa, and we're not 100% sure their squad issues at the moment, their injuries, some of their key players haven't even played together as of yet. So once again, Dean Smith, you'd expect, will be addressing the media tomorrow and both Villa and Wolves fans will learn a bit more about both of their teams ahead of this game. So let's jump into my predicted lineup for the match. Based on what I've said so far and based on what we know, uh, this is my lineup that I would go for for the game against Villa. In goal, Jose Saar. Um, as you would expect. A back three, I'm going to stick with Kilman, Cody and Romain Sace as my back three. Um, well, pretty solid against Newcastle. And the last couple of games have improved quite a little bit. Right back, I've gone with Nelson Semedo and left wing back. I have stuck with Marcel. I think that's the way that Bruno Lage will go. Um, however, I, I would be pleasantly surprised to see Ryan Aitnori come into the squad. Um, the two central midfielders, I'm going to stick with Ruben Neves and Jean Martinho. Both obviously on international duty with Portugal, but 
neither played a, an absolutely massive amount of minutes. Uh, they both got spells here and there, so should still be quite sharp, but at the same time should have that uh, that freshness um, to, to run the game, hopefully, on Saturday. And my front three, I've gone with Hwanky Chan on the left-hand side, Raul Jimenez up front, and on the right-hand side, I have opted to go with Adama Traore. Obviously, with Trinkau out with COVID-19, it does offer the possibility of Daniel Bedentz to start. But I think it's got to be Adama Traore, somebody that hasn't started in those last two games. And if he doesn't start against Villa, I have a very, very strong feeling that something is going on behind the scenes. That is a big reason why Bruno Large isn't starting Adama Traore. Contract situation, of course, up in the air right now. Um, but at the same time, is Bruno Large looking at it and thinking... I do have the likes of Pedence, I've got the likes of Trinkau, I've got the likes of Huang, who, although they're not as powerful and explosive as Adama Traore, technically they're probably a little bit sharper than Adama, and maybe that suits how large his style of play and what he's looking to achieve long term. But I don't know, I think this has got to be a game that Adama Traore starts in, and with the circumstances surrounding Trinkau, for me, Adama. I'd be very, very surprised if he doesn't start. But that is my 11 for the Villa game. Do let me know your thoughts on that 11 and who you would start if you agree with my uh, predicted 11 or who you'd bring into the team. Maybe you believe Willy Bolly should be starting. Um, it's crazy that he still hasn't broken back into this first team. Ain't Nori as well. Even Den Donka, who's impressed in little spells that he's had this season. Uh, but I will move on to the Villa perspective now. I was uh, had the pleasure of talking to Max who runs the Villa On Tour YouTube channel to get his thoughts on Aston Villa season so far and what we can expect on Saturday. So hey guys, I'm delighted to be alongside Max from Villa On Tour here. Max, how are you keeping, mate? Yeah, I'm really good, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thank you, very well. So we've got Max in to give us sort of the Villa perspective ahead of the... Uh, can we say Derby? Some people don't think it's a Derby, but yeah. I mean, we have this conversation every time, don't we? <laughs> I know. Uh, it depends where you're from, depends where you live, depends who your mates are. But yeah. for some people, I guess it is, yeah. Let's say let's say local Derby anyway. But uh, Wolves uh, travelling to Villa Park to face off against Villa. Max, it's been a mixed start, let's say, for, for Aston Villa. One point ahead of Wolves, they sat mid-table, bang on mid-table, 10th in the league. Um, let's start off with the start of the season for you guys, really. Main news for you boys, obviously, Jack Greedish leaving the club, a massive amount of uh, money coming into the club, reinvesting it in certain areas, mainly that attacking line, Buendia, Bailey and Danny Ings coming in. Um, what have you made of the, the season so far? How, how Villa started off in your eyes? It's it's been a bit of a difficult one. I think it's been fairly inconsistent. I think it hasn't helped that we had a bit of a, a sticky pre-season with games being cancelled by by COVID and things yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's been inconsistent. We'll have a, a couple of really good results, like smashing Everton three 0 going to Old Trafford and winning, and then we went to Tottenham a couple of weeks ago and it was really really flat. So I think once once everything clicks, and I think the main issue we've had is, is injuries. I know every club has injuries, but yeah, like I said, Bailey, Buendia, Ings, and Watkins haven't been on the pitch at the same time yet this season together. Oh, wow. Um, so we still don't know, you know, where we're going to finish this season. At the start of the season, people were saying, "Oh yeah, let's go for Europe and things like that," but I think that's a, a stretch too far. And seven games in, we still don't know if that's realistic or not, based on the fact that we, we haven't seen our full team yet. Um, but it's been positive. There's definitely positive signs there. And like you said, when you lose a player of Jack Grealish's quality, it's not ever going to be easy to sort of replace him. But I think, you know, the, the recruitment side of uh, things of Villa have done really well in terms of getting those big names in. So, yeah, happy days. Like you said, mid-table at the moment. And I'd be happy to finish top 10 this season. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, you were saying about the inconsistencies, beating United, smashing Everton, and then you've got sort of dropped points there where you lost against Watford, dropped points against Brentford, who, I mean, they haven't been an easy game. I mean, even we we lost to them earlier this season. But I think that's the, the frustration for clubs, probably like Wolves and like Villa, where they, you know, they just need to sort of almost tighten up on those sort of games, like the teams like Watford, like Brentford. If you can start picking up points against those, that's when you can sort of see yourself as possibly a top seven contender. What, what I know you said there, sort of mid-table for you, what is the sort of overall expectation from Villa fans this season? Is, is it to try and break into that top seven? Because last season, you were up there, maybe if you had Grealish available a bit more the second half of the season, you, you could have easily been uh, in, in Europe this season. Yeah, it's, it's it's a tough one. I think a lot of Villa fans were saying like, OK, we came 11th last year, it's time to progress. And me personally, I'm, I like to think I'm fairly sensible in terms of yeah, where yeah, I think yeah. we're going to finish. And I just just want progression. Look, last year was good. Um, a couple of years ago, we survived by the skin of our teeth on the last day. So finishing 11th and, and picking up some really, really good results last season was a great positive, especially with there being no fans. 
Um, so I think there was a lot of positivity going into this season and a lot of people were talking about Europe. But for me, I think that's a tiny step too far. I think mm -hmm. especially we're going to keep going back to it, losing your best player. It's never going to be easy. So you need to have a kind of transition season. And that's that's the sort of mentality, mentality I've got this year. Obviously, we want to progress, getting into that top 10, just improving your points tally on last year. That's all we can ask. And then we'll go again in the summer, probably spend loads of money and, and try and get into <laughs> Europe at some point. Um, but yeah, I think get, I think you know that the quality of sides isn't great. You look at Tottenham and Arsenal who are obviously going to be going for that top six. Yeah. They're nothing special. I know they beat us a couple of weeks ago, but they were nothing special. Even when they beat us, Arsenal are in an absolute state at the moment. Although they've improved a little bit recently, but at the top, the sides around there, Everton as well is another one. We've, we've showed our quality against them already, so I think we've got the quality there. It's just. Can we apply that and, and actually get some results? Because like you like you touched on, silly results like getting smashed by Watford first game of the season. Um, I know Brentford are a great side, but newly promoted sides, you've got to be beating them. So as long as we sort of sort ourselves out, beat these sides that we should be beating and then pick up the odd result, like going to Old Trafford and winning, I think you know there's no doubt that we could get Europe if, if we really want to. Yeah, and, and even Leicester, a team that you probably deem as top six, top seven now, not quite, you know, getting getting going as of yet. And we played Spurs, um, United and Leicester, our first three games, and every single one of them, every Wolves fan come away from it thinking, how on earth haven't we got anything mm. out of those games? So I think you're right there, a little bit of consistency, maybe a little bit of luck at times. And I mean, I don't know if you're into your stats, but the XG table Wolves are right up there and we just got to yeah. start putting the ball in the back of the net a little bit more, I think. But um Villa, obviously, you've mentioned sort of injuries there. I know probably we'll learn a bit more tomorrow when the managers have their press conferences and so on. But from social media and from the news, who in your eyes looks like they may be available or may not be available for Saturday's game? I think the main thing that I want to focus on is Emmy Martinez being back because you've probably heard a couple of months ago, the last international break, there was all this faff with them going to Brazil and yeah, breaking yeah. COVID yeah. guidelines and all of that. I still don't really know what happened there, but it was a bit of a bizarre story. <laughs> Um, and I think they got back, him and Buendia got back on the morning of the game, which is just ridiculous. Like, they need to sort out all this international Yeah, that's stuff. ridiculous. Um, but I think Martinez is coming back tomorrow. So whether he'll be back for the game, I don't know. I'm, obviously, it's easier for goalkeepers rather than an outfield player. So I'll probably expect him to start. I haven't seen anything um, on that. So you probably expect him to start. Uh, Buendia hasn't gone away, so he'll probably start, in my opinion. Bailey's the one for me, though. We, like I said, we just haven't seen enough of him. He comes on for 10 minutes against Everton, scores an absolute screamer, goes off, having literally kicked the ball too hard. And <laughs> going in. So that, that's the frustrating thing. We just want to see our best players on the pitch. Um, whether it will come too soon for Bailey, I think it will. He might be on the bench. Um, but yeah, that's a tough one. Watkins has gone away with England. Um, and, um, you know, he came on a little bit against, uh, who was it we were playing? Uh, Hungary, he did okay, he came off for two minutes. But, look, I expect it to be a, a fairly strong side. I don't think there's too many injury issues apart from, um, obviously, Bailey. So, you know, happy days. Hopefully, we'll get into the point now where we can actually see our strongest side rather than an injury hit Villa, which we have seen uh, at the start of the season. Yeah, hopefully it's another couple of months until the next international break as well, because mm. oh, well, we had two or three already this season. There's another one in, in, in the middle of November, so they come around all the time now. It's Is it again? Annoying. Oh, my word. I, I was hoping that that was going to be done until the new year now. That's ridiculous. But mm. it just breaks consistency. Like you said, with the whole COVID thing right now, for foreign you know, foreign players, we've had the same with um, Jimenez. It's been an absolute nightmare trying to get um, you know Mexico really kicked up a fuss when we couldn't you know he, he couldn't travel out there last time yeah. and he played early hours of this morning last night so he's our main striker our number one man so if he's you know he might be a bit jaded Saturday which is, will be a bit of a concern but um, toughest question I'm going to ask you now your score prediction for Saturday Max. I was thinking about this. I knew you were going to ask it. I, yeah. I don't want to sit on the fence, but we were talking about it just before we came on. There's never too many goals in this fixture i think the home side tends to have the advantage in recent years anyway um so it's it's a really tough one if i'm going to be boring i'll probably say 1-1 one, one, but yeah. i can probably see brave. Villa, yeah, yeah. I, can, I could probably see villa nicking it just just because we're at home it's a full house um obviously it's always going to be lively um against walls at villa park but I, i'd fancy us just to nick it but i'll stick yeah. with one one I'll, I'll put my sense yeah, it. yeah no it's gonna be a close game it always has been we said sort of beforehand last season the both games were dead close um and it always tends to be you know a tough game for for both teams really so uh fingers crossed mate uh hopefully you know all i'd say normally all the best for villa but maybe after saturday all the best for the rest of the season um but yeah thanks for jumping on i'll make sure i leave a link uh to max's channels in uh the description below what is it you do? It's sort of vlogging, really, sort of showing your match day experience, isn't it, for those Villa games? 
Yeah, so I go to every single Villa game pretty much home and away, vlog the experience. So if you want a match day experience of uh, Saturday, hopefully Wolves fans will be jumping on that after they probably smash <laughs> now. So if you do beat us Wolves fans, go and check that video out, Villa on tour on all of the socials. Fantastic, mate. Thanks a lot. So once again, big thanks to Max. I'll leave a link to his channels in the description down below. Um, and score prediction from me. I know Max was quite brave. He went with a 1-1. And I think that's a pretty fair prediction. And I think it'll be close. I think it'll be a goal either way or a 1-1 draw. Um, so I'll go with 1-0 one, one Wolves. I've said that on a couple of Villa podcasts that I've been on. I was brave and said a 1-0 Wolves win. Um, but it, it's going to be... Um, a tight game. I always think, you know, the games at Villa Park for Wolves are difficult. Um, so I'll be intrigued to see how this one goes. Delighted and, and looking forward to be to be going to the game. So we'll have the match reaction and match review outside Villa Park on Saturday. And uh, until next time, guys, be sure to hit the like button. Down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And fingers crossed, Wolves can get all three points on Saturday.